Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a new method for biliary drainage in malignant biliary obstruction and about the hemodynamics of aricial bleeding. My name is Panayotis Paraskevopoulos. I come from Greece and I am very, very lucky to work alongside my supervisor and mentor, Balint, and my scientific methodology supervisor, Mahmoud. And uh, my vision would be to improve palliation strategies of critical ill patients. And uh, as simplistic as it may sound, all you have to do is find a proper idea and implement it properly. So I have two project, projects. One is the addition of undergrade standing in patients undergoing hepatic ocastrostomy. And the second one is about the hemodynamics of aricial bleeding. So we have some patients, patients with malignant biliary obstruction, and usually these are terminally ill patients. There are not a lot of things we can do about them in terms of uh, treatment, but for palliation, we have to drain their bile. And uh, for that, ERCP is the first line treatment. And uh, the problem with ERCP is that in a subset of patients, such as those with surgically altered anatomy and duodenal obstruction, it just doesn't work always. So as a second line, we have percutaneous biliary drainage. But the thing with percutaneous biliary drainage is that it's very uncomfortable, very unpleasant, very painful for the patient and it can lead to skin infections. So in the last decade, ultrasound-guided biliary drainage has emerged as an alternative option, and it seems like it has significantly better res results compared to percutaneous biliary drainage. So there are many different methods uh, in ultrasound-guided biliary drainage. I'm going to talk about two, the hepaticogastrostomy and the anti standing. Uh, in hepaticogastrostomy, we take the endoscope, we go in, we use the ultrasound probe, and basically we just make a connection between the stomach and the intrahepatic bile duct. In the undergrade standing, we do the same thing, we go in, we use the probe, we, uh, we puncture the intrahepatic bile duct, but we just continue, go, 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 until we find the stricture, and when we place a stand, and then we go out. So you can immediately imagine that uh, I punctured a hole, but I didn't close it. That's the problem with the undergrade standing. The problem with hepaticogastrostomy is that uh, the flow of the bile is not physiological because it goes opposite. So if we combine these two methods, we can use this tract that we created, the hepaticogastrostomic tract, and we can place the undergrade standing from there. So what we're looking for is, uh, uh, is uh, for the procedure, this combination to be as good in terms of clinical and technical success and superior in terms of reintervention and adverse events. So we have uh, searched five databases and here is where we are with our progress. I will soon finish with the full text selection. And uh, for my second project, I'm not exactly yet sure what I want it to be, but I know that I want it to be about the hemodynamic changes in uh, bleeders versus non-bleeders, probably. And uh, you know that portal hypertension uh, leads to the formation of venous collaterals. And uh, these varices is uh, my main concern because acute variceal hemorrhage is a medical emergency and it has a six-week mortality of 20%. That's too much. And uh, some background in general about portal hypertension. We can separate the etiology into prehepatic, hepatic, and post-hepatic causes. For the prehepatic and the hepatic, we have uh, portal vein thrombosis and bad Chiari syndrome. So you can imagine we have a vessel, there is a normal flow, and something comes and it gets stuck. So obviously the pressure will increase. Uh, in the other, uh, now we're in the, in the liver for the hepatic causes. Uh, this is, uh, it has a hexagonal structure. In the periphery, we have the portal triad. In the center, the central vein. And I would like to draw to your attention to these cells, these green cells here, the stellate cells. Uh, in the normal liver, they store vitamin A, but in the pathological uh, liver, they undergo a transformation. They become myofibroblasts. And basically, they start secreting collagen. And uh, you can imagine that this collagen secretion will change the architecture of the liver, as well as it will start to squeeze those vessels. So. In all of the cases, basically what we have is we have a decrease in the radius. And when the radius decreases, the resistance increases. This is the primary component of portal hypertension, the resistance increase. And then we have the flow component, but that comes later. And anyway, you don't need to like deal with the math and the formulas and everything. You can imagine that the tension of the wall will depend on the pressure and on the wall thickness. The thinner the wall, the more probable for the virus to pop and to have bleeding. 
So I'm not yet sure exactly what we're going to do with this project. Uh, maybe we're going to check like um, cut off value and see if there is a higher risk of aricial bleeding or not. I am open to suggestions if anybody has anything. I really am not sure yet. But I would really, really like to show you this and I would like uh, to convince maybe some of you that this is very feasible. Uh, this is a method uh, that was uh, discovered in 1972 and uh, this is basically embolization of the gastric vein. But it's not used clinically that much, it doesn't matter. But uh, what matters is that we have a method that gives us access to the gastric vein. So I was thinking because the University of Pets has a bioengineering uh, faculty, I was thinking maybe, and if, if somebody can tell me that I'm wrong, I would love that, the only reason for this variceal formation is this abnormal blood flow between the portal vein and the gastric vein. So we have the abnormal blood flow and then it goes to the esophageal veins and we have the formation. So why don't we make a medical device that acts as a one-way valve and allows the flow, the normal one, but does not allow the, physio, the abnormal flow? And I think, in theory, this could help with the variceal formation to not have it and not have the bleeding. We have made the preliminary search key, we have found articles, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Everyone is surprised a little bit from your innovations. <laughs> and um, according to, to, to the first study, maybe there are a couple of, uh, let's say, rendezvous mm -hmm. uh, procedures that don't belong to integrate or retrograde stenting um, positions. So will you also include this kind of um, uh, gastrohepatic anastomotic um, drainage? No, no. Uh, we are only concerned about uh, this uh, combination of procedures. So basically, it's just hepaticogastrostomy, and with it, we do the anti-grade standing. So we, are only we only care about the combination of these two procedures compared to just one of the procedures. So no rendezvous, no. This is 10 times uh, that I heard this presentation, and it's absolutely this. I, I, I like this, but I'm not totally uh, understand this, this, this methods. You should try to show it much, much better, some photos or something else to understand what's going on during these surgical or, or endoscopic uh, methods. Okay. It would be much, much better to understand the clinical problem, I think. Thank you.